show me what his plan and his will is. He's now using it to show me what it's going to be like in the future. Amen. I had a dream in the early fall of 2024 of a huge church convocation where people had gathered from all around the country to meet up in Cleveland, Ohio, to celebrate God together. There were all types of sidebar events going on and booths all over the exterior of the facility with people moving and selling merchandise to those who had traveled to this great meeting. As I passed through the vestibule and hallway areas, I saw many of the people that I had fellowshiped with over our many years of pastoral ministry and for all the years of my dad's pastoral ministry as well. Everyone was nodding at me to show that they recognized my presence there at the meeting. I, in return, nodded back at them to acknowledge them also. As I opened the main doors at the back of the sanctuary, I immediately noticed my parents and other members of my family congregating at the back. They were sitting in pews lined against the back wall. I saw my sister Tracy there with her family. My sister Keitha, her kids, her grandkids were there also. And my youngest son and my two granddaughters were there. My dad was seemingly enjoying himself while getting acquainted with all of the new grands and great grandkids that had been born to our family since he had left us to go to heaven. My mom was smiling and tickled at how my dad was just playing with these perfect little strangers and didn't even know their names. Daddy could care less. He saw little people that looked just like him and he was making it his business to tickle and wrestle with every single one of them. As I got closer to my parents, I noticed that my dad had a little baby girl in his lap and they were just laughing it up as she began to climb all over him and to play with the sharp white whiskers on his face. The little girl looked to be no more than nine or ten months old and she was as cute as she could be. She was chubby and light-skinned with black curly hair and had one little dimple on the left side of her face, just like me and my youngest daughter, Puma, whose real name is Antalia. I stood back in the distance as I watched her interactions with my dad. She would copy his every movement, mock his every sound, and watch him intently while staring him directly in the eyes. I thought to myself, She's mimicking my dad perfectly. I said, this little girl looks a lot like me, my daughter Puma, and my son Zeke. Those are my two kids who look nearly identical to me out of the five. Then all of the other little kids of our family began to gather around my dad and began to mimic his voice and his movements as well all while service was still going on and at its height up at the front of the church. I said, it's pretty amazing that my dad and our family was not interrupting the convocation at all. As a matter of fact, it looked like a service within a service. I then realized that the bigger lesson was of and for my family, that my dad was teaching the younger ones by example and by a literal hands-on approach, teaching them to not just be in church, to be there, but to be there for each other, teaching them how to laugh and to love, how to pray and to play all together. Because we're a family, whether presently together or in the spirit, we are the horns, we are one, We are strong, we love hard, and it ain't nothing that nobody can do about that. It was important to my parents that we learned this critical lesson because for the most part, we are removed from what they wanted 
for us once they had relocated back to heaven. Finally, I, after hearing that the International Young People's Department was hosting a street meeting over in East Cleveland, I was intrigued and wanted to be a part of that soul-winning effort in my city and my old stomping grounds. East Cleveland has come a long way from the days of the billionaire John David Rockefeller and his Standard Oil Company fame, and the once long-time reputation as a thriving suburb in Northeast Ohio. It is now a notoriously dangerous and downtrodden neighborhood with a lot of hopelessness and despair. A regular, common message for such an uncommon time would never, and I mean ever, be accepted there. It would take a groundbreaking message to lift my people and my old community. Fortunately, when I arrived on what looked to be Potomac or Scioto Avenue off of Hayden Avenue, the sun was beaming down and the heat was sweltering as there stood a young black man in the midst of performing a presentation before the masses of people who had gathered there that day. He was telling the crowd of his testimony of where he had come from, where he had been, and most importantly, where he was now going. As he proclaimed his story of surviving those very streets and surviving the penal system for many years downstate, he looked as if he was transforming before my eyes. He was aging with each passing progression of his story. The more that he shared with us, the more older his appearance became. He preached with the passionate vigor of one who was running out of time. He had successfully captured the imaginations and the attention of the gathered souls who opened their doors and poured into the middle of the street to hear him. As the young but aged gentleman prepared to close his message, he beckoned to the crowd for his son to assist him with a prop. Out of the crowd, there came an even younger black man walking slowly while bearing the weight of a heavy wooden cross over his shoulders. His knees were buckling under the pressure of the prop. But nonetheless, he pressed forward with that cross. And after making it to the middle of the crowd that had gathered, he collapsed from the weight and the long walk. His dad immediately turned around and helped his son up off of the ground. Other men ran out of the crowd to help stand the cross up and to help hold the younger man up. But his father prevented their intervention and admonished them that this was the point of the prop, that his son had to bear that cross alone, fall if he must, but his father alone will help him up in order to keep him up until his son realized that he needs to lean on that cross in order to keep it up. You see, leaning on it indicated that his son had fully embraced it. And the only way that he would fail is if the cross was not fully embraced by him. Ultimately, after a long time of holding on to that cross, the son had become so weak until he could no longer stand. It was then that the father beckoned to the crowd for his grandson, his son's son, to come to the front of the crowd and to grab his father's left arm and to throw it over his shoulder as he provides support for him. Then the grandfather gets under the right arm of his son who had carried the cross and he holds him up together with his grandson. The older man then says to the crowd, my name is Christian. My name is Christian J. I came through life from off the streets and I came up from it the hard way. Carrying the cross in the heat of the day was my own beloved son CJ and beside him is 3J. For as weak as Jesus became, yet in three days he was raised, and now he is greatly praised because those three days changed us three J's when he defeated death and opened up.
those graves. We went from death to life, only after the cross and the grave. And now, we forever have grace. If we can just wait and worship because of those three days. Hmm. According to the prophet Moses, in his vision of the Genesis and the beginning of all things, he pins in chapter number one of the Genesis that on day one, God separates the light from the darkness. On day two, God creates space between earth and the heavenly. But on the third day, God creates the principles of production by creating seeds that are placed into the ground in order to produce life yielding herbs and leaves, my friends, which are for the healing of the nations. In the ugliness of Jesus' death came forth the beauty of a new life for all of us. The plan for the finished work was already prepared to sustain a man not even here yet before man would ultimately come forth just three days later in the creation process. No cross, no crown. No story, no glory. Yes, indeed. Praise God for his grace. And it is. So, 